How's it going, guys? I'm here to review Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan, 1989. <laughs> the plot for this film, Jason wakes up under the lake yet again, and this time he goes on a cruise ship, killing teenagers one by one, and eventually the cruise ship leads to New York City, which is Manhattan, and from there, Jason follows the same group of people, or a group of survivors, as he's um, chasing after them in the streets of New York, he's killing other people in the streets of New York. It could be like mob gang leaders, mobsters, um, junkies, people on the New York uh, train station. It could be anyone in New York, really. So, I mean, that's the plot in a nutshell. He's just following, or he's just killing people on a boat. And then once they arrive in New York, he's chasing after those survivors and he kills everybody else in New York City. Most of this movie actually takes place on a boat, so... Like an hour and 20 minutes in this movie and then the last 30 or 20 minutes of this movie is just like set in New York. So pretty much it's really Jason takes on a cruise ship instead of Jason takes Manhattan. Yeah, this movie's really not that good. Um, it's I mean, it's, it's not worse than part five, don't get me wrong. Part five is still probably my worst one in the franchise, but part eight is still pretty bad. The acting is pretty mediocre. The characters are just kind of forgettable. Um, a lot of stupid decisions were made in this movie. Um, Jason looks kind of cool, but at the same time when he is unmasked, he looks very, very um, crappy unmasked. I mean, the, the bright side with Jason, he is played again by Kane Hodder, who played Jason in the last movie, so that's a plus. <laughs> And there's a lot of things in this movie that doesn't make sense. The main character, her name is Rennie. Um, I guess she has some kind of like psychic connection with Jason and seeing the younger boy version of himself. It's just weird. I don't know what's going on there. And I heard in the making of this movie, some shots in New York, obviously, obviously except for the, the infamous Times Square scene, except for that, but everything else... I heard it was filmed in Detroit, so most of this shit was even filmed in New York. But yes, this movie has the highest body count since part 5, but yet some of the kills are creative and cool, and there are some kills that are just pretty weak. And the score, the score for this movie is very, very, very cheesy. Like, I don't know what's going on with the score, but some of the songs or sound, or sound pieces in this movie they, they're they throwing in some kind of like 80s jazz music to like to set up the Manhattan vibes. I'm just like. And spoiler alert, if you guys haven't seen the movie, in the end, they defeated Jason. Talks, they're like, they go in the sewers to defeat Jason. All of a sudden, there's a. A whole bunch of like a like a flow of um, toxic waste that um, travels through the sewers, and of course Jason gets trapped in the bottom of the sewer, and toxic waste is all over him. But at the same time, after a fountain or like a sea of toxic waste just drown him, he turns into a little kid again. Not really a good movie. Some scenes didn't make sense, and it was a bit cheesy, but. It was entertaining, but it's not a really good Friday the 13th movie. And will I recommend it? Probably not, but if you want to complete the collection and if you're a Friday the 13th fan, go ahead. I recommend it. <laughs> Why would I rate this film out of 10? Honestly, I would rate this film... I would rate this film a 6 out of 10. It's not worse than part 5, but it's still not good. So I would rate this film a 6 out of 10. So that was my review of Friday 13th, part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Please leave a like, subscribe, um, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs>